Hey y'all, welcome back to another Batter Chatter. Today we're gonna to be making a different twist on s'mores. It's a very simple recipe. And then of course we're gonna have a little chat session over coffee, but I'm gonna bring a special guest in with me. In today's Batter Chatter, we're gonna be making Golden Graham's s'mores bars. It is so simple and so yummy. The first thing you'll need to do is spray a nine by 13 baking dish with some olive oil. In a large pot, you're gonna add five cups of mini marshmallows, a cup and a half of milk chocolate chips, five tablespoons of butter, and then you could use corn syrup or just do a tablespoon of water and a fourth a cup of sugar. Now you're just gonna turn it on low to medium low and stir it pretty often until everything is completely melted. Once your consistency looks like this, you're done. So now you're just gonna add in a whole box of Golden Grahams cereal. Once you add it in, stir it all around. Not every single piece of the cereal will get coated and that's totally okay. And then you're gonna add in another cup of the marshmallows just so that they're not completely melted. Stir that in and then you're gonna transfer it all to your baking dish. Then you just wanna press it all down. It is very sticky, so you just have to work with it. And we're gonna be letting it harden at room temperature for about an hour. I did go ahead and add some more marshmallows on top. I don't think it called for that, but I just wanted some extras. So that's it. We're just gonna let it harden for an hour. So you got me on camera. I got you on camera. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I'm ready. So today's guest is very obviously someone that y'all all know and love. I get so many comments about him in my videos. And for the longest time, he wouldn't be in my videos. He was like, I'm not going to be on camera. But we just wanted to tell our story to y'all because I have had the question a lot, like, how did y'all meet? How did it all happen? So thought we would fill you in on that while we're waiting on our dessert to get hardened, I guess is the word. Anyway, we'll have that in just a little bit. So we'll do a taste test for you. Don't worry, but we're just going to share our story. So yeah. how are we going to do this? We have not rehearsed this at yeah, all. It's not rehearsed <laughs> for sure. Um, I'm going to get some coffee. Do you want to start talking first or should I? Let's see. I was in the air force. I had just come out of basic training and I was in, uh, the Fort Walton beach area in Florida. Um, doing sort of the second leg of my Air Force training. A friend of mine that I went to school with uh, somehow figured out that I was in the Air Force and um, that I was in training and decided to contact the training uh, squadron that I was associated with. So and, hang uh, on. When he says he was in school with, it was who, someone he was in high school with. So they were both from our town, our small town, and they were both in the Air Force and they were both stationed in that area doing two different things. Right. So yeah. somehow, and the other guy's name is Steven as well. <laughs> yeah. So the other Steven found out that this Steven was down there. Yep. Okay, continue. That's right. And um, he uh, got the number to the squadron, you know, found out where I was, um, got in touch with me and asked me if I wanted to come home with him um, for Labor Day weekend. Yep. And so, of course, being in training, you know, you don't get a lot of uh, liberties and especially it depends on which phase of training you're in. And it just so happened that uh, it was right at that phase of training where I could 
I had a little bit more liberty. I could go off base and things like that. So the timing was perfect. And, and so my uh, commander let me go. And so I went home. We, we drove through Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and, uh, and came home. And I visited family during that time. And while we were coming home, I remember Stephen saying, um, I want you to meet someone. I want you to go out on a, on a, a date, a double date with me and, and you know, his, his girlfriend at the time who is his wife, his wife now, Shelly. Yep. Yep. And, uh, I was like, yeah, you know, at the time, I'll just be honest. I was not interested in any sort of relationship. I was in training. This was a very new thing. It was kind of a shocking experience for me. I was in a very challenging career field. Um, sort of the, it was sort of the special operations side of um, the air force. So it was a really challenging time and uh, I was not interested in a relationship. I had a lot of traveling to do. Um, and so you just thought it was going to be a date and yep, that was it. I just thought it was going to be a date and that was it. So, no. <laughs> so yeah, we went, um, so we go on the buying date. And, well, wait, let's, yeah. okay. I'll let's, set this up, right? Okay. So they came home. Now I was a senior in high school, so I was was not even 17 yet, y'all. I was 16. I was about to turn 17, like in a couple of weeks. My birthday is October 1st, so this was Labor Day weekend. So I was a senior in high school, and when Stephen, the other Stephen, called and said, "Hey, I'm bringing home this guy, um, and he's gonna be a a date for you." Number one, I guess I was his charity case, but he he honestly knew how close me and Shelly were. Um, and so of course he wanted to spend time with Shelly while he was home, but he knew that I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. So he thought, why not set them up on a blind date? So they get home, Shelly and I, I've told y'all this before. I used to work at something called a fish camp and that's just a seafood restaurant here in the South. That's what we call them is fish camp. Shelly and I both worked there. We came home to her house. I was spending the night with her. And so after we got off work, it was like 9.30, almost 10 o'clock on a Friday night. And Stephen and Stephen were there with Shelly's mom in the living room waiting on us to get home. And we had never met. Like this was going to be the first time I laid eyes on him. And I came in smelling like fish because I had just left <laughs> the fish camp. So I was all greasy and nasty. And we knew we were going to have to take showers and get ready and stuff. Uh, but they were already there. And I remember walking through Shelly's house and looking into the living room and seeing y'all there. And I, I didn't want you to meet me for the first time when I was smelling straight up like a fish and I was right. pretty nasty. So I was just gonna kind of dart by, but I glanced at him and I almost passed out. I was like, oh my gosh, he is cute. Like I really wasn't expecting Dude, that's much. That's not the impression that I got from her when I saw her face. Like her face was like utter horror. Just because he was cute. Like so I was so death. she was horrified for completely different reasons, you know, so I'm, I'm looking at the horror on her face and I'm thinking, oh, well, this is not going to go right. <laughs> this like, is just not going to happen. I freaked out. So Shelly and I darted to the back of the house to go take showers and get ready. And the whole time, like I didn't like the outfit I had brought. I was so nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, he's cute. And even Shelly was like, yeah, he is cute. Like we weren't expecting this. And um, so we got ready and then we went for our, for our blind date. We went cosmic bowling i don't know if y'all know what that is you probably do whereas the bowling hours are bowling hours bowling alley after hours black lights everywhere loud yeah. music really obnoxious but that was like one of the only things that was open that shelly and i and you too could get into you weren't even 21 yet you were 19 wow, that was so there was so nothing years ago <laughs> so oh, there was man. nothing open other than that so that's where we went that late at night we went cosmic bowling I remember um, we didn't we didn't talk a whole lot and, and then of course while you're bowling there's not a whole lot of conversation going on I mean right. I remember you went and bought me some like chili cheese fries or something like that <laughs> chili cheese fries yeah that sounds about um, right. but I was like I was just I don't know I was I had a huge crush huge crush and because of that I was really quiet and shy and I didn't want to say much and he probably got the complete opposite feeling. Well, from I mean, you got to remember, I was, like I said, I was going into this thing thinking this is going to be a one-time thing. I'm never going to see this person again. So we had our date and then we went back to Shelly's house and I think we watched TV or something. And I remember we were in that like lower living room and Shelly and Steven were on like on a love seat or a couch. And then yeah. he and I were on a couch and I kept like 
I was 16, almost 17. Like I didn't know what to do. So I just kept kind of scooting closer to him. And every time I did, I kid you not, he scooted further away from me. I was like, is this, do I repulse him? I, I was so upset. I was like, you know, like I was very, it was very innocent. I just wanted to be closer to him, like let him know I was interested. And every time I would, he would like reposition himself and move further away. And I thought, <laughs> All right. Well, he's not interested. Well, I wasn't interested. I mean, truth Thanks, be known, I Thanks, was. Babe. I wasn't interested. <laughs> I mean, I have to. I have to be honest. I know. You know, and, and tell and just be upfront. I just really was not seeking any sort of relationship at that point in time in my life. You know. So we met, and then him and Stephen went back down to Florida. Yep. So we had just met that one time, and then he spent the rest of the weekend here back in our hometown, visiting family, seeing everybody. And um, he went back to Florida. Well, when he went back to Florida, the other Stephen, Shelly's Stephen, was talking with Shelly. And Shelly was like, Mandy's really interested in Stephen. And he said, really? He said, well, I can get her. Because this was, you have to remember too, this was back in, this was in 1998. Right. So this was back before smartphones and all of that. Like, <laughs> for any of you younger kids watching... <laughs> This is back in the Stone Ages. When yeah, we can had, you believe? You know, we didn't have <laughs> smartphones back then. We barely had cell How phones. How did we survive? We barely had cell phones. Like, free nights and weekends type thing. Like, right. remember that? Okay. So, he was not... You didn't have a cell phone. I don't think you were no, allowed to have it because you were in training. Yeah, even if I did have one, I, I wouldn't have used it. No, I didn't use it because, remember, it was all the calling cards and everything. Oh, yeah. I basically spent all the money that I made, which was nothing, basically, on calling cards so that... Yeah. You could call me. But before we get to that, yeah. so the only way to reach him was on a pay phone at his, like where he was staying and his training, like what do you call that? It's a barracks. There you go, yeah. barracks. So my, our training barracks just had like, I think, I think we had like two phones eventually, but really we just had one. And how many guys were there? The I don't know how many guys were training. I mean, you're probably looking at maybe 60, maybe 60 people in the barracks and one pay phone so you can imagine what it was like i had the phone number so that's all stephen could get me the other stephen he gave me the phone number to his barracks he was like there's a pay phone you can try that <laughs> that was literally the only way i was going to get in touch with him mm -hmm. so i started calling and calling and calling only to get a, a busy signal every single time because there were guys lined up to call home, to call, you know, they only got so much time on the phone. Gotta call mom and dad, you That's know, right. whoever else. So anytime it would ring, which was very, very rare, y'all, I was like, this looks like stalking almost, and I'll admit it, I kind of was, whatever. <laughs> I knew what I wanted. <laughs> so <laughs> I, anytime it would ring, somebody would pick it up and hang it right back up. Mm -hmm. And so it would ring and I would be like, yes, 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 yes. And then I'd hear them pick it up and I'd start screaming, don't hang up, don't hang up. And they would hang up. So from our point of view, you got one pay phone, You've got 60 airmen in the barracks trying to use that one pay phone. So you go in there and you didn't have a lot of time. You're in training. So there's no downtime. So the only downtime you get, you go to the pay phone and you're either waiting in line or you get there. It rings. Well, you don't want to like answer it and then go get whoever right. they're calling for. Because then you've been waiting wait. in line. Right. So yeah, it's like you just. So finally, finally, I'm telling this was all, I mean, God wanted us to be together because it's, yeah. a, it's a miracle that this happened. The phone rang and a guy said, hello. And I was like, <gasps> so I said, I need airmen. And so I told him who I was looking for. And he was like, okay, hang on. Well, then I hear all these people behind him screaming, saying, hang up the phone. They were mad because he was going to go get Steven to get mm -hmm. on the phone. And they're going to have to wait. <laughs> And how in the world he got you without them hanging up the phone, I'm not sure how that happened. No clue. But Stephen got on the phone. Here we go. Much anticipated phone call finally happening. Happening. Like I'm finally getting him on the phone. He says, hello. I said, hey, this is Mandy. And he goes, Mandy who? <laughs> Crawl in hole and die. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, like, uh, <laughs> uh, we went on a blind date a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Well. So we talked for just a second, but you can hear the guys behind him screaming mad that he is on the phone. 
he said, look, I've got to get off this phone. I can't. Let me call you back tomorrow. What's your phone number? So I gave him my phone number and he said he was writing it on his hand. I did not believe this at all because he didn't even remember who I was. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So we hung up the phone. He said he would call me tomorrow. I called Shelly immediately, bawling my eyes out because, number one, he didn't even remember who I was. I had been thinking about him nonstop, nonstop, and he didn't remember me. And then secondly, he said, I'll call you tomorrow. Girls, we know what that means, right? I, I, yeah, I'll call, I'll call you. I, I got you. <laughs> so I was, I was devastated, and I'm talking to Shelly, and I'm talking with her, and call waiting beeps in. I get a beep, and I answer it. And it's this guy. <laughs> so he called. He was out of breath. You want to tell him how, why you were out of breath? Like what, well, what he did? Well, <clears throat> we had a what we called a shopette, which is basically just a, a convenience store on base. And that's where we got all of our goodies from. And uh, that's where you bought your calling cards. And they had other pay phones there, too. So it's kind of raining at this, you know, it's, it's drizzling a little bit. And. I don't so know I, that I knew that. Yeah, I put my put my PT gear on and I just run down to that shop at, you know, um, and got me some calling cards and called you on one of the pay phones and I probably stood there. How long did I stay there? I was on that phone for at least an hour, maybe longer. Maybe so. It was, and he would say, oh, my calling card's running out. I'll, I got to buy another one. I'll call you back. And he would. And and it was it was a blessing because, you know, going through that, that kind of training, um, you know, it was, it was stressful. It was challenging. It was, uh, it was a trying time. And so to have a friendly voice on the other, on the other end of the phone was, uh, was the therapy that I needed during that time for sure. Just because of the, the stress and everything. All right. So that's it. I mean, that's how yeah. we met. We met on a blind date. We were set up by our friends, Stephen and Shelly. So yeah, we just talked all the time. Any free chance he got, he called. Yeah. And then anytime he was able to come home, he came home in between going to Georgia and Washington and for all these different training things that he had to do. And then eventually he got stationed in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Yeah. Um, and, then and then things started to sort of mellow out and become more normal. Yeah. And I would travel home just about every weekend to yeah. see Every weekend see or <laughs> every other weekend. It was about a four hour drive or so home and yeah. he would come see me when he could. Right. So we met Labor Day weekend of 98. You proposed almost a year later in August of 99. Right. And then we got married in June of 2000. Mm -hmm. So not quite two years that we had known each other, but y'all, I knew he was the one early on. I remember telling my mama, and you have to understand, I used to change boyfriends. I had a new boyfriend crush <laughs> every other week. Like it was just, that's just how I was. So I was in love every other week. And so when I told my mama, that I was gonna marry him, she was like, okay. I said, no, really. And this was way before he asked me to marry him. Yeah. Way before it got really serious. I just knew, I don't know, it was just something that I just knew that he was my future husband. So. Yeah. You had me at a bowl of chili. Did you just say that? <laughs> yeah. All right, tell him. You had me at a bowl of chili. First date. No, we second, to, well, second date. second date, really, First yeah. date, like. First, first, like, yeah. Real date. Real date. Me and her, we were at, uh, was it Lone Star? I think it was called Lone Star. I know it's not Longhorn. Yeah, it wasn't Longhorn. It wasn't it Chili's. Was, I think it was Lone Star. I think there was a restaurant called Lone Star. Yeah. I think that's and what it was. So we go there and I don't even remember what I had because I couldn't get over the fact <laughs> that she ordered a bowl of chili. on, on a, You wouldn't think that would be like first date food, you know, where <laughs> you... you Order a bowl of chili, but you a did. lot of girls just get like and a I was salad. Like, wow, this is great. Someone who likes food, <laughs> all types of food, you know. I was old, and I was so super skinny, but I could put away some food. <laughs> yeah, she was. I could, really I could eat like a horse, and so yeah. could I. I mean, we yeah. were. And now we still eat like that. And it now, I, now, yeah, exactly. Now <laughs> I wear my food. Oh, that's funny. No, but um, yeah, I wanted, I wanted a bowl of chili, so I got yeah. a bowl of chili. It I was cold I outside. That. I was like, wow, she's not afraid. He was so impressed by that. I didn't. I wasn't doing it to impress him. I just wanted chili. Yeah, you didn't have no dainty salad. Just <laughs> bowl of chili. <laughs> <laughs> so another question that we've gotten is, how did he propose? And um, that was a very sweet story because, again, he was stationed in Fayetteville, North Carolina, so he didn't have a house or an apartment here in our town. Right. When he came into town, he just had to stay at his mom's house. 
Um, so he had told me he was going to take me on a date that evening. I did not know that that meant a date to his mom's house. He had kicked his mom and her husband and uh, his stepbrother out of the house. Like he had kicked them out. And when we got there to the house, all I remember, and if your mom sees this video, she might get mad. <laughs> I mean, every, it's, it's okay now, but there were candles already lit. Like when we walked in the house, there yeah. was candles already lit. And I remember thinking, he could have burned the house down. <laughs> like that was my first thought. And I was like, what's going on? And he said, I'm going to cook you dinner. I'm not taking you out tonight. I'm going to cook for you. And y'all, this is what a lot of y'all don't know. This man pretty much taught me how to cook. Like he loves to cook. He is such a good cook. I just like food. Let's be honest. <laughs> I like food. So he decided he was going to cook for me. And you made, um, I'm pretty sure it was chicken, chicken alfredo. alfredo. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he, he made that. And you played, do you remember what CD you played? Was playing in the background? Oh my gosh. No, I don't. What, what city was it play? Sarah McLaughlin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little story about Angel. I don't really know that there's a story. That was just the song Angel by Sarah McLaughlin. He always said that when he heard that song, he thought of me. And so when that song came on on the CD, on the CD because it was a CD back then, y'all. <laughs> yes, yeah, CD, right. <laughs> on the CD. When that song came on, he got down on one knee and pulled out the ring and proposed. And... The rest is history. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Ain't we sweet? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story of us. That's how we met. We've been together ever since. It has not always been great. Life is hard. Marriage is hard. But by God's grace, here we are. Yep. Amen to that. Yep. How it about was, a cheers? How about a cheers to that? I love you. Love you. Okay. You ready to eat? I am ready to eat. Let's see. You gonna bust out some of them s'mores. <laughs>
get me a mushroom. <laughs> Oh, Get boy. Get your mushroom. All right. Ready.